Hello, I'm Barry Rosenberg, contributing editor for technology and special projects at Breaking Defense. Today, we're talking about high energy lasers with Evan Hunt, Raytheon's director of high energy lasers and counter UAS. Thanks for joining us, Evan. Thank you, Barry. Happy to be here. A Raytheon Intelligence in Space will deliver three additional 50 kilowatt high energy laser weapon systems for the Army's Directed Energy Maneuver Short Range Air Defense, or DEM SureRad program. Tell me a little bit about the program and the threats it is aimed at. So right now we're building uh, combat prototypes, which will make their way into the hands of soldiers um, to prove that the laser weapon technology is, is ready for transition to an upcoming program of record for uh, uh, these DEM Shorad uh, striker vehicles. That program of record will be a one third component. So the other two thirds will be more traditional weapon systems. And these laser weapons are really being looked at as very compelling capability to precisely uh, deal with asymmetric threats in an optimized manner. They're firing invisible silent beams of light uh, that are rechargeable and right off the vehicle to, to deal with those threats. So Evan, you mentioned asymmetric threats, and I'm wondering what kind of threats DEM SureRad program is specifically aimed at. So laser weapons uh, have great potential for uh, being the right solution for low cost and swarming threats, which are, are being more and, uh, used more and more by uh, adversaries today. That includes uh, group one, two, and three drones, basically uh, drones that are available off the shelf, all the way up to drones um, that are, are maybe the size of a cruise missile. And then it also includes rocket artillery and mortar that can come in in, in uh, great numbers and, and you need a way to engage it cost effectively. And then finally, even uh, rotor attack aircraft, uh, uh, the laser weapon has great potential to engage those, those aircraft as well. I'm wondering if you could expand on that a little bit. And, and I know you're providing the high energy laser and other systems. I'm wondering whether you can go into a little bit more detail. Yeah, so Raytheon is building the 50 kilowatt uh, high energy laser. We call it the laser weapon module. Um, and we're also delivering the radar acquisition system. So laser weapons are optical systems and they require a radar to cue them. Basically, you get a, a radar track. It cues a electro-optical sensor, um, which you then zoom in on the target. So you actually get to see the target as you prosecute an engagement. And then with the press of a button, uh, the laser immediately starts uh, burning a hole in the target. Um, and so Raytheon's scope in this contract is to deliver the laser weapon module and the radar acquisition system to Cord Technologies, uh, who is our, our, our prime um, that is helping integrate that system onto the striker vehicle. Very good. So besides being a counter UAS solution, the system also has counterintelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capabilities. So what are those capabilities specifically? Well, that's what's so fantastic about laser weapons is they're really hybrid sensor effectors. Um, every laser weapon requires, because you're prosecuting an optical engagement, you need an optical track. Uh, that means you don't just, a normal, a traditional missile system, you'd have a radar track, uh, you'd fire the missile out and the missile would find its way to, to the target. With a laser weapon, you actually need to track a spot on the target um, via pixel. And so that means you have incredible sensor capability um, to, to zoom in on the target like you would with a standard video camera, um, often look at it in multiple wavelengths, and then uh, turn on the laser when desired, prosecute the engagement, and you get real-time battle damage assessment. That's also something unique. Um, you, get to, you get to see what's happening to the threat as you engage it. And then the time you're not uh, actively engaging threats, the rest of the time, uh, you're surveilling the area. You have an incredible uh, radar capability. You have an incredible electro-optical infrared sensor capability that can be used to positively ID a range of threats or uh, do a more traditional intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance mission, giving troops on the ground um, eyes they've never, they've never had before. Very good. Some good details there, Evan. Um, you've also delivered three high-energy laser systems to the Air Force and are building a fourth. Um, tell me about that effort. Yeah, DEM Shorad is a 50 kilowatt class laser weapon system. Uh, there's a smaller, lower class of laser weapon system called 
uh, which we call the Hellwiz. Um, it's, it's at 10 kilowatt right now, and that's really optimized for group one and two drones, the, the smallest drones, which are very often the biggest problem because they're so widely available um, and so easily modified for military use by, by state and non-state actors. Um, we were very lucky. The Air Force uh, purchased three combat prototypes in that power class. We delivered them on the back of a Polaris M Razor, so it looks like a laser dune buggy. And uh, we sent those overseas to different operational locations for use in an air base air defense role. They're parked at the end of a runway and they're uh, actively surveilling, looking for threats uh, and, and defending the base from, from potential drone attacks. We've had a lot of success. There are over 11,000 operational hours now. Uh, we made our way through all the, uh, the safety and policy wickets to, to become a SECDEF approved uh, weapon system in the field. Uh, thanks for that response, Evan. And so you mentioned there was a fourth system as well. Yes, uh, thanks, Barry. So we have uh, received a, a different award from Air Force Life Cycle Management Center, different section of the Air Force, to uh, deliver an upgraded version of those three systems that were overseas. This one is packaged differently into a pallet that goes on the back of a commercial truck. Um, just for different operational scenarios, a pallet is indeed easier than a, than a laser dune buggy. Um, and it's, it's a more mature system. Every system we've built so far, we're, we're iterative, iteratively upgrading um, to make it more robust and survivable in the, in the environments and also easier to use for the warfighter. Thanks, Evan, for filling us in on what Raytheon is doing with high energy lasers. And thanks to everyone who's tuned in today. Goodbye. Thank you, Barry.